Hey, Justin Dyson here, Dyson Apiaries. Uh, planning on putting out a little quick video kind of on what to expect when you're picking up nukes, um, kind of how to handle that process and what to do immediately after as you get them home. Uh, apologize, there might be a little bit of wind noise. I've been trying to record this video all week and the wind seems to blow every day. So apologize for that, but stick right with us. So first things first, um, when it comes to picking up our nukes, we need to know what to bring. Um, there's a couple different methods uh, that suppliers will, will do for you. I'll talk through ours, and I'll talk through uh, what some other suppliers may do. Um, so some suppliers will provide their nukes in like a cardboard or a pro nuke or something like that. And with those, they have a plug they can, like in the cardboard nuke, for example, this one's kind of dirty. It's been sitting, sitting out for a little while, but in the cardboard, the nuke would be in here um, and they would just stick this yellow plug in here or with the pro nuke, there's a closure device there for that as well. So in that case, they would close those up for you before you arrived. Um, and you would just simply pick up the nuke and take it home. Um, and I'll talk about what to do when we get home too um, in a minute. But in our scenario, a lot of times I, I sell to some newer beekeepers and, and part of our process involves kind of uh, giving, a, giving a brief lesson on the bees while we're here. I, I feel like it's a good opportunity for some quick mentorship. Um, and I'm, I'm, gonna actually, uh, I'm gonna actually walk through the hive as we do the transition um, I try not to schedule more than you know four or five people in an afternoon that way we have some time and and I'll kind of walk through that that colony and show different components within within it and just kind of give some descriptions so we know what we're looking for when we get home just kind of a quick educational opportunity what I like to tell customers to do is just go ahead and bring a hive that you're going to put the bees in um, so it doesn't matter if you're eight frame or ten frame that that's fine so what we'll need is we'll need a bottom board we will need our our brood box unless you got medium um, if you got medium you would have a medium box i'm going to provide you with five frames with the nuke so if you're in 10 frame configuration you'll need to bring five five additional frames um, then it doesn't really matter if they're foundation or drone comb i'm i'm getting them right out of here as soon as uh as soon as we make that transition but you know don't bring a bunch of damaged and ugly looking frames that I, i'd get concerned about with uh, disease or something I, I prefer for you just to bring some foundation new new wax um and then once you get home if you want to trade those out for some of yours that's the preferable manner but if you're in an eight frame configuration you would just need to bring three frames and i'm going to fill out the other ones and then once i put the bees in there you'll need to have a lid with you um, one, one of my recommendations is bring something to close up the entrance. Um, if you're in, if you're in a regular Langstroth hive here like this, you know, you can use a moving screen. Um, you could bring just a, a an entrance reducer. Uh, there's, there's five empty frames in this box after I put those in there. So they're not going to overheat on the way home. You can completely close these bees up for the, you know, brief amount of time they're going to be closed up. So. We'll just stick this entrance reducer right in the entrance and then use the small hole, stick a little piece of duct tape over that hole. They're closed up. Um, another option I use is just take some number eight um, screen wires, eighth inch holes, cut a piece about two inches wide, and then um, you know the width of the entrance, which be 16 and a quarter minus an inch and a half. So, and then I cut it about two inches wide, and what I do is I just, I just bend that double like that and shove it right in the entrance and that that's a good closure method and also allows for some ventilation lastly we need some way to um, tie the hive together you may have your bottom board screwed onto the box if you do that's great um, in that case you know that lid's probably not going to blow off even in the back of your truck um, but 
you know, if you had a migratory top or something, you'd definitely need to tie that down. But even if your box is not tied together, I mean, you can just simply take a ratchet strap. Um, we can take a ratchet strap, wrap it around, and I don't have the other end here, but um, take a ratchet strap and then we'll just cinch this hive together and it will be... Would my rooster be quiet? Anyway, we'll, we'll cinch this hive together and uh, it'll be nice and secure to get home. So before I jump in this hive and kind of show you the process, lastly, so when you get home, so two options, one is if... <laughs> so when... So when you get home, if, uh, if you got the nukes in, you know, like a cardboard or if you got them in a pro nuke, what I would want you to do is just go home and set them where they're going. Um, one of the things I like to do on pickups is pick them up in the afternoon, late in the afternoon when the bees have already, you know, they're coming in and then once it gets kind of shady dark and the bees are done flying, at that point you would take your bees. Um, but in this case, you know, if you were taking in one of these, you could possibly pick up in the morning or something like that. We'd just have to close up the night before. So when you get home, just simply take the box, set them where they're going, take the plug out and walk away. Um, let those bees kind of chill. They've, they've just been through, you know, going down the road and everything else. And sometimes they're a little testy in that, in that environment. So let them settle down, let them orient. Just make sure you go ahead and set them where they're going. Set them right on the hive stand. If you already have a hive setting there, just set them on top of the hive. It, it's perfectly fine. They will figure out that transition down to the entrance after you move them. If you're in this this configuration when you get home just simply take the entrance reducer out um, turn them loose and walk away I recommend if you take a hive like this home give them three or four days before you start going in there and messing with them like I said they can kind of be testy sometimes uh, during that first couple days after they get home so I'm gonna walk through quickly kind of what I would do I'm gonna transition these over give a couple pointers while I'm here I'm not sure if this nuke is, is quite ready to go out. I'll find out here in a second, but that's one of the things I got to do today is kind of go through all these and I got to go through all these and figure out um, which ones are ready, but we're going to kind of check this one while we're in here. That's a decent little nuke. Uh, a lot of field force out right now, but they are close. They are definitely pulling some comb. So, so this frame here has uh, has a little bit of seal brood, a little small ring of, food of of brood here in the middle, and then some honey and pollen surrounding that. I'm gonna go ahead and stick that in here. There's a good frame of brood. I'm gonna count that one. Good solid frame of brood. Good solid frame of brood here. Good solid frame of brood there. And there's our queen. If you can see her, I'm actually gonna mark her really quick because I haven't gotten her marked yet.
So we got her marked. Get out from in that corner. We got her marked white for this year. I'll go ahead and put that in here. And that frame is full of eggs and a full side of pollen there. So this is a good nuke. Um, they're ready to go. If Phil Force comes in this thing, it'll be bowling over. They're working pretty hard today. So what I would do on this colony here is I would go ahead and slide in a frame of foundation like that. And I'm gonna jump this frame over one notch. And what that'll do is that'll just encourage that colony to go ahead and start drawing on that next frame over. Um, and, and as the nuke progresses, if you're a home, you know, and if you're a home and you have this colony in this shape right here, as the nuke expands, sometimes you can take a frame of foundation and just do what I just did. As they draw that frame out, move one additional frame over. When they draw that frame out, move another one. And as they explode before long, you'll be, you'll be supering that colony. So that's kind of, eh, this colony's uh already drawing home off the side so we need to get them out of this nuke box so that's kind of how that transition goes we'll stick the lid on close them up let the field force come in you take them home um when you get home this this hive needs to be set there's another video about kind of setting up the hive stands and that kind of thing um so once you get them home during the spring honey flow there's really no purpose in feeding they're really not going to take it as long as they're doing some working um but as that starts tapering off, as we get into the uh, latter part of May, um, that honey, that spring honey flow is going to start tapering off. You need to get some feed on these bees and uh, keep them growing all the way through, all the way through the summer until you have, you know, I, I like to run mine double deep, so you could run a deep and a shallow or a deep and a medium, however you prefer. Um, but that's kind of that's our goal this year. Uh, not necessarily trying to uh, make splits off of this, you know, or we, we, we can make honey off of this hive, especially come sourwood honey flow, you can make honey off of this colony if you treat them right. Um, but that's kind, of the, that's kind of the process. Hope you enjoyed this video and I uh, look forward to seeing you on Nuke Pickup Day.